Barry Desborough, thank you very much indeed for coming on to Talk Police all the way from the south of France. <laughs> Your area of expertise is evolutionary psychology, but your interest in evolution and human nature came while you were growing up in uh, Malaysia, is that right? Um, I started out my adult, uh, my first adult career was as a school teacher. Uh, and it was, uh, I, my second career was a software engineer. So to be honest, my interest in evolutionary psychology and uh, which led on to talking to creationists and my interest in evidence for evolution uh, really came about by that because I was lucky enough to uh, be just able to afford to retire early. I thought, what's the best thing I can do with my time? And it always troubled me and puzzled me what human nature was and what it was like. And part of what led into that was my experiences in Malaysia, which was sort of back end of colonial times with very casual racism and uh, attitudes from Westerners. My father was a service pilot. Uh, I was brought up on a Air Force bases. Uh, and the casual sort of um, racism, the attitudes that were taken towards these people. For example, I was in boarding school in Singapore. It's one of the most fascinating cosmopolitan places in the world, such a mixture of cultures and people. Uh, and we were not taught anything about uh, any of these cultures. You have the Chinese, the Malay, Indians. All you learnt was the standard British, if you like, or Western educational fare. Uh, so, that, that, as I say, that's an ingredient in what went into my current interests in yeah. what makes people how they are. And one thing that really troubles me, uh, uh, puzzles me, is how easily human beings can be inhuman to one another. And that's, that's really the key to my inquiries, the, 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 you know, the, what is really behind my passion for the subject. A while back ago, uh, I interviewed Dr. Zach Moore, and we spoke about the misconceptions and misunderstandings mm -hmm. uh, surrounding evolution. So, um, Barry, what are the most common misconceptions surrounding it, and why are they wrong? Okay, there are there are so many. <laughs> there are so many misconceptions. Where to start? I, th I think one thing you come across an awful lot is that. Uh, Creationists will say that evolution is evil because it preaches competition, uh, nature red in tooth and claw between different groups, uh, which you know uh, uh, refers back to what I was just saying. Uh, one a big eye opener for me about evolution was reading the Selfish Gene, uh, Richard Dawkins. An unfortunate title. It was written in the 80s. It was the title of the time. But basically, the what evolution is about is genetic information. Can this gene survive through whatever route it goes through? Creationist misconception number one is that evolution is about uh, different species outdoing each other or different groups within species trying to outdo with each other. Yeah, they're taking the survival of the fittest to sort of an extreme. Exactly, or, to absolute yeah. extreme. And, and it's a misunderstanding of that phrase. I mean, the fittest it merely means the best at getting reproduced. It, it's yeah. almost a type of tautology that whatever is good at being reproduced gets reproduced and it increases in frequency in the population. But the, it's basically genes that that happens to rather than species or subspecies or groups of uh, sub yeah, uh, individuals. So there we are. It's about genes, not about individuals, not about species. That's one big misconception uh, that creationists like to hold on to. One real uh, thing that bothers me an awful lot is the assumption that if you uh, accept the theory of evolution as being true, uh, it is inherently atheistic. Now, I do happen to be an atheist, but I'm not an anti-theist. I was trained as a teacher in a Christian-founded college. Uh, they taught evolution, nobody had any problem with it. This was Church of England. They took us on trips to Down House, uh, Darwin's 
at home. Uh, and the, the idea that creationism is exactly the same as Christianity and the idea that acceptance of evolution is exactly the same as atheism is basically a lie. It, you know, it's uh, some people knowingly propagate that, so I can call it a lie. Others yeah, just kind of an us and them mentality, isn't it? It, it is, yes, yeah. And it's it's it groupthink again. It's it's you know we are this group. Uh, this is our identity. Uh, we're going to hold on to it, and we're all going to contrast it with your identity. And they almost ignore the fact that a huge number, if not the majority, of intelligent, educated Christians uh, quite happily accept uh, theory of evolution uh, as being a, a, a representation of reality. So, is that yeah, theistic? So you call that theistic evolution? Is that right? Theistic, yeah. Some people don't like that sort of label, but it, it's basically um, be believing in Christ as being divine, which is Christian. My understanding of what Christianity is, uh, combined with acceptance of the science of, of evolution. So you can call it theistic evolution, guided, uh, whatever. Um, that's the most common label for it. Some people object to it. I don't really know why, but uh, uh, but the, my point is that there is a huge wedge of theists who who accept evolution and have no problem with it. Probably going to have to accept it more and more, as in the light of all the uh, the evidence. But uh... Uh, yes, I think it seems to be happening. I mean, it's it's always America dragging their feet. Uh, there are a few. Uh, creationist uh, initiatives, if you like, in certain other, mostly English-speaking places. Uh, I think Scotland, Turkey as well. Northern it's Ireland. Really oh, Turkey as well, they, they, the Muslim area. Uh, Australia as well, but uh, in, in the Muslim, uh, was it Adnan Oktar, uh, all his uh, material is almost identical to the Christian creationist material that uh, gets yeah, I think they're borrowing from each other, you know, they're looking... Yeah, they're oh, yes, they're using each other's... <laughs> yeah, they've got copies of uh, Answers in Genesis's propaganda over yeah. there in Turkey and perhaps vice versa, I don't know. <laughs> so that's right. I keep trying to get to talk to him and it's the same with almost every other creationist group there is on the internet. As soon as they find that you know what you're talking about, you get banned from their groups. And, and that's wow. uh, that's quite telling. That's quite telling. They cannot. Uh, they have no confidence in their own ideas, uh, such that they can subject them to examination. So. Uh, this is why a lot yeah. of the uh, YouTube channels, like the ones ones which I uh, contest, like uh, Genesis Apologetics, they have comments disabled. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's very they, very they, common. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they, they just they want to swearing or anything. <laughs> it, it, that's because you godless atheists who always get abusive. They, they will say that's that's their excuse. Well, that's what they think, but that's another story. Anyway, <laughs> um, Barry, creationists uh, who believe in a biblical or a spiritual beginning of the universe will outright reject evolution, as you've said in a lot of cases, and say that there is no good proof for it. Um, in your blog, you talk about ERVs or endogenous yes. retroviruses. Yes, so I made a, yeah, I made a special study of that because it struck me as some of the best, clearest evidence for common descent. There is very, very little that creationists can come up with to counter the reasoning, the evidence and the reasoning associated with the endogenous retroviruses. I think of them as something like uh, watermarks on paper. Uh, it, it, it verifies, it authenticates the fact that uh, these two genomes at some time in the past developed from a common genome and then split. Because those are, ERVs are duplicated each time reproduction occurs. Uh, so if all you do is wind the clock back, uh, uh, reproduction, 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 going back in time, you've got to hit common ancestors, those who, those individuals who acquired each of those ERVs in the, in the distant past. It, it, to me, it's just, we can put links and so on on your video to, to my FAQ and uh, uh, that explains it all in, in a lot more detail. But basically, 
uh, I made a special study of that because uh, I, I believe it's the, some of the most clear cut evidence for, for common descent and not, uh, it, it's evidence that some creationists have tried valiantly to <laughs> poo poo or to question. Uh, that's in the blog as well. I pick apart a lot of their uh, articles on the subject. It's a, it's a line of evidence that is so clear cut. Uh, you have to be put your fingers in your ears and your hands over your eyes in order to ignore what it tells you. So, are you <laughs> saying that ERVs are, are a way of possibly actually finding common ancestors? Because we have so few with the fossil record. Uh, yeah, we, we do. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it is. Uh, how can I say it? It's you can go back in time and trace changes to the genome uh, by studying closely related species. Uh, you can trace what clusters of genes went this way, what clusters of genes went that way when speciation occurred, and then you can infer from that that these genes came from common ancestors. So all the time you were, you were learning about the, the, what these, the genetics of these common ancestors was. It, right. it won't find you uh, uh, a fossil, but it will find you genetic information about what that uh, those common ancestors uh, were actually like. Okay, so ERVs are an excellent proof of evolution in action. So what other ways can we mm -hmm. look around us today, look at ourselves, look at other species, and see that evolution is a fact and that it explains how life as we know it uh, came to be? Mm. Well, how life came to be is a different question. That's again a misconception that uh, creationists have. That evolution says about how life originated. Uh, so that's. Or, or that's I should say species came to be. <laughs> Got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, I still come back to genetic markers. I'm not so much as a, as a physiologist, uh, but I understand that there is. If you learn enough about the subject, you can trace minute details of physiology which uh, must have been inherited from common ancestors between closely related species. The, the, the coincidences are so remarkable uh, that there is no other sort of reasonable explanation for those similarities, especially when you're talking about um, not necessarily vestigial, but, but strange properties of organisms. Why, if an intelligent designer designed two different creatures, why did he put such uh, extraordinary similarities unnecessarily into, into those creatures? It's almost as if, if there was an intelligent designer, he was trying to fool us into believing that evolution was real. I'm sure that's all part of the uh, the devil's master plan, but uh, yes. <laughs> I have heard that. I've heard all of them. I'm sure you've heard all of them. Probably. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a word for that, so this gets me up for the moment. Uh, you manage several Facebook groups concerning evolution, and you've also worked on Wikipedia, which is interesting. Can you talk a little bit about all these? Yeah, yeah. First of all, the Facebook groups, um, I just like to join in any lively groups, and I like to engage with creationists on on, uh, on this subject. Uh, but it's difficult to find. That's, that's why I'm in so many groups. As I said earlier, creationist groups themselves will tend to ban people who are too effective in arguing for evolution uh, pretty promptly. Uh, and creationists come into evolution creation discussion groups that don't tend to hang around very long and don't tend to engage in uh, discussion de in, in any detail uh, for very long. So you know, I, I have to spread myself a bit thin in order to find people to actually teach, present them with information uh, and in the, uh, try to engage them. But it, it's also, you know, the Wikipedia is another aspect of, of me. I'm, they say once a teacher, always a teacher. I was, I was a school teacher for a good long time. 
I enjoy explaining things to people, whether it's on Facebook, uh, whether it's setting things out in my blog, whether it's on Wikipedia as well. Wikipedia is what I was trying to do there is to find a way, which has been a long ambition of mine, and I haven't really made as much headway as I wanted to, uh, is to create the equivalent of a Wikipedia for children. Um, and I've, I've forked out some of my own money for a Wikispaces site and, and so on, trying to get things off the ground. Basically, the idea is that people who can produce good educational content for directed for children uh, should be able to come and produce that. We live in a world now where there is a big shortage of teachers. Textbooks are very expensive. There's a great hunger for knowledge, especially in the third world. And the technology is becoming such that almost every child on the planet will have an intelligent handheld device, which is internet connected. And that's a tremendous potential opportunity for educating. Uh, these kids are hungry to learn. They, they just need to be given the opportunity to they learn. They just have to go onto their phone and, and uh, one of these uh, Middle Eastern countries and go, why is, uh, is there any proof of yeah. evolution? Look it up on their phone. Yes, yes, and not necessarily evolution. My speciality when I was teaching was actually mathematics, and uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm quite keen on on teaching that uh, as well. But any any subject, uh, cosmology or cos yeah, you name it, you name it. Climate change. Perhaps with the coming of uh, artificial intelligences, uh, kids may be guided to good educational content. The trouble is it's it's a mess. The internet is a mess. There's a whole sea of, <laughs> there are there are jewels and pearls in there and there's an awful lot of garbage as well. So, you know, my idea was that you'd have, have a, at least one point at which you can access good educational content, which may branch out to other sites, uh, you know, uh, uh, but a, a, a child with equipped with, uh, an internet device like, like that. There have been initiatives. So you just hand out the one laptop per child, the, the hole in the wall project uh, in, in Calcutta or somewhere. They just put a, a computer screen facing the street. So the street kids, completely illiterate street kids, came up almost like wild animals saying, well, what's this? And they start pressing buttons. And But these initiatives need content. So it's no use just handing out a machine. Uh, kids need guidance. They need uh, points at which they can go, like Wikipedia for adults. But uh, it's a specialist skill, I think, writing for children, writing content which is the language isn't too complicated, but is adequate for explaining the concepts that are being covered. Uh, and just styles of writing, just the way it's laid out and not too much content on a one screen. And like, those... um, like Wikipedia, um, the, 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 uh, the main Wikipedia, it's, it's in a sense self-correcting, isn't it? It, might say, it yes. might say citation needed, then someone will come in and, and do it. Yes. clarify something. So it That's would work right. like that. It would, yes, yes, just like that. Uh, but it would be, it's not suitable content for young uh, children in the sense that there is too much information on one screen, the language isn't uh, ideal, uh, it, it takes a teacher's eye, I think, to know what is what is the best way to present that uh, type, of, the type of information that you want to. Barry, why do you think uh, creationists are so resistant to evolution being a proven fact? Obviously they have a religious agenda, but underneath yeah. it all, I was thinking about this just recently. I mean, they have been brought up with these ideas that it is evil, it's atheistic, it has no soul, no morality behind it, uh, anything can go. Uh, so they, that's the diet they've been fed on. And also, I've, I've talked to some of the creations that I've talked, talked to in greatest depth, I've got them to try to explain to me why they are creationists, because I'm fascinated by it, but I've never really understood it very well. I think, though, the, the, the thing is that 
if they accepted evolution, they would feel completely at sea. They have not been taught that there are other ways of looking at the world. There are other rationales for morality, for good behavior. Uh, and and they are panicked by the thought, I think. I, I, I see them as uh, people clinging, clinging to a pole in a hurricane. Uh, you know, if they let go, let go of their creationism, they would be completely lost because they're, they're not equipped. They're not equipped to form uh, an alternative worldview. Uh, they've been corralled away from it. Uh, they haven't really given it enough consideration, uh, enough credence to believe that people can be moral, believe good, decent lives, and believe in the theory of evolution. That's, that's it. I think they, they're, they're frightened and, and lost. If they, they feel they would be lost if they let go of their... their and I, I asked this question of uh, Bill Ludlow in another interview, and he said yeah. uh, his, his take on it is they take it personally. Um, you know, I'm not but, an ape. I'm this glorified creature made in the image yeah, of God, yeah. and uh, don't take that away from me. I'm not. Oh, well, that is one thing. Yes, I'm, I'm not a monkey. I, I'm, yes, uh, that is one thing. And also, it's a a core part of their identity. So their personal identity. So if you threaten that, uh, it's it's an insult. It's uh, it, yeah, there you are. And this would also apply to uh, Muslims or any other. Uh, creationists yeah, doesn't uh, have to be Christian. Who, yes, who cling to creationism for exactly those reasons. Uh, and Muslims, by the way, and and Jews have their sections which uh, are, are creationist, and other sections which quite happily accept the evolution. Uh, Islam has quite a, a history of proto uh, um, evolutionary ideas when you look into the history of the science of, of Islam. Uh, so it's by no means every Muslim is a creationist, uh, just as by no means every Christian is a creationist. Okay, thank you so much, Barry, for talking to us. And I'll make sure well, that you, all your links are in the, uh, to your blogs are in the description below. Yeah. Um, so before we close, okay. if there's anyone who comes across this interview, and I, I okay. always do this, I always do this, who comes yeah. across this interview who is skeptical or resistant to the reality of evolution and why it matters yes. what would you say to them right now the reason i'm passionate about this the main reason i am passionate about this is that look at the world now look at the mess it's in look at uh, uh, conflicts all over the world the key to trying to improve the situation ameliorate the situation uh, sorry, my French is coming out there, uh, is understanding human nature. That's why evolutionary psychology is important. That's why evolution is important. You, you imagine you're a zookeeper. You have a new species comes in, and you're charged with looking after its welfare, making sure it's happy and healthy and gets on and so forth. Now think of us being zookeepers of ourselves we are a species that needs managing somehow or other the key to managing it well is to understand the species i don't think it's possible to understand our own natures without recognizing our evolutionary history so yeah that's the essence of why i'm such a passionate uh, advocate of, of evolutionary science and we're all glad that you are, Barry. Thank you very Thanks. much indeed for what you do. And I hope you, I hope you keep doing it for a very long time. Oh, so, okay. yes. Bye -bye. And hopefully we'll catch up with you again in, in the future sometime. Yeah, no, thank you. Bye-bye <laughs> then.